which if you think about the leverage would make sense. This is what we're going to see, the crews from Poland, France, Great Britain, Romania, Netherlands and Switzerland. Great match-up in the centre between Great Britain and Romania. The Romanians stumbled up in the men's eight yesterday. Here's the Polish crew, furthest away with the white cap, Lukas Pozulaska, Matas Wolingowski and Mikolaj Burda. Familiar features from the Tokyo 4. Emilian Jakoviak in the stroke seat, 21 years of age. There's Berda, you raced him, didn't you, Greg? Yeah, I back think, in 2012. Yeah. In two, French crew, I think uh, they are coached by Bastien Tiberia. Jürgen Grobler, the British coach, has had a hand in that. And from stroke, it is Theo Rai Benoit Brunet. The Turland wins are in the bows of that French eight. This new British combination, two men from the four that won in the world, Will Stewart, Sam Nunner here in reserves. So we have Oliver Wilkes, David Ambler, the reserve who took, took that gold medal last year. Matt Aldridge has come back in after illness. And of course, Freddie Davison nearest us in the stroke seat, the Oxford Brooks Osman. Well, here are these four men. What's in their legs now? The Romanians, Tiganescu, Semnichuk, Barairu and Lahachi, who stroked the eight yesterday in that sensational race. Well, they just missed out to Great Britain. The Dutch back from their winter training camp, furthest away from us, Gus Malie, just 21 years of age, from Willem the Third Club, Nelson Ritzema, Olaf Molnar and Gert van Dorn, the Neeras Osman, and former Husky from the University of Washington in the stroke seat. And there's the Swiss Osman, closest to us, Pat Brunner, Kai Schatzley behind him, Josh Urich, brother of Simon, the Olympic Great champion Britain. in Rio in 2016, in the lightweight men's four, and Dominic Condro up in the bows from the Yona Club. Attention. So as you say, it's a stellar lineup here. It's a good matchup in the centre of the course. But I'm sure it won't just be about the two centre crews as the British were a little slower off. The Romanians, like you said, they raced yesterday in the eight. They got a real jump. That's that shot we're talking about. You can see the steering. The Romanians having to make a correction quite quickly. We look now at the calmness, really, on the face of Freddie Davidson. He's got his name there written on his blade, so he knows which one's his. That's a good spot. And yeah, there's a real calmness and length and control about him. Yeah, you can see how smooth Freddie was around the back turn, and you can see, you know, Pat Brunner there a little more aggressive. Yeah, certainly looked more aggressive, didn't it, in that Swiss crew. We saw them racing in Zagreb, where the competition wasn't so fierce. Great to see them here now on this stage. But how about the Romanians jumping out there? Half a length on the field, three quarters of a length on the British. Yeah. And, you know, they must be so buoyed up after that men's eight race yesterday. And their coach, the Italian Antonio Colomelici, has just said, look, lads, you've got nothing to lose. You know, they know how fast the British were through the middle of the course. The tactics are you need to start quickly. They burnt off the rest of the fields. The Dutch in there look smooth, controlled. Britain coming back into it, that lane three. And over on the far side, the Poles have had a great start, actually, and still really in contention. The French maybe just a little off the pace. It will be Romania, but that's a really good move, isn't it? Through about sort of 350, 400 metres the British have made. Well, I'd say this is a great setup for a race. There's a few people who've gone hard early. Like you said, the Romanians, these four were in the eight yesterday. They got the silver behind the British, but there was nothing in it, five hundredths of a second. So a solid pace from the British here in this four has just eased them in alongside the fast starting Romanians and it's the British bow which is now just showing in front so yeah just a really kind of calm setup here from the British crew getting into the race you can see Ollie Wilkes who wasn't in the team last year former competitive swimmer has actually raced against Adam Peaty a few times and uh, talked about how tough it was for him to get in this crew a former Liverpool University man and uh, he's now riding in one of the top British boats up in the bows. And that beautiful rhythm by Freddie Davison, backed up by Matt Aldridge, just setting them up. Well, it's a beautiful rhythm. It was a beautiful picture as well from that drone just coming in to see the angles that we're able to get to show you the racing on the course. And you can see the British crew still pretty well down the centre of the lane, pretty calmly steering along, pretty calm and in control. And they've had a very good period here from about 400 gone out here towards the 1,000. 
Yeah, it's a bit like we saw in the World Championship, isn't it? That sort of beautiful style of rowing. Of course, the Romanians have doubled up in the men's eight, so they are, you know, rowing this race with a bit more lactic in the legs. The Dutch have come through the Romanians, Greg, to take second place. Yeah, I think it's a nice point you make, Martin, that the Romanians have doubled up, so they can have started fast. But having started that fast, you can't help thinking that this, the Romanians are going backwards, and it's the Netherlands with this new look lineup who are actually most likely now to come through and, and threaten for that silver medal. The Polish have also dropped away quite badly uh, and are paying for their early start. Dutch crew moving confidently through. If the French medal, there will be some celebrations. You know, the pressure on them to produce fast crews for the 2024 Olympics is absolutely massive. They've paid for Jürgen Grobler, the legendary German coach who worked with Steve Redgrave and Pinson to go over to France and to sort of run their land training program as a consultant of the rowing program. So, you know, it's a big deal for them. A massive deal getting Jurgen Grobler over there. He used to coach the British, but the British are going pretty Ooh, fast, wobble. pretty fast without him. And interesting to see, you know, we say it's bumpy and wobbly on the course. There is a swell out there, and you, you saw it there. You don't get to see the wobbles like that, do you? That was quite dramatic. And, you know, they seem to have slotted right back in. Matthew Aldridge in the three seat, the former coastal rower for Christchurch Rowing Club, uh, will be used to sort of swelly conditions, I guess, but he won't have found that comfortable. No, it certainly won't have found that comfortable. It's not comfortable conditions, as we've said. It looks beautiful on these pictures we're able to show you, but these are tough and challenging conditions. But I've got to say, it's ridiculous how far the British have moved on the rest of the field, and it's only the Netherlands who are with them. But it's probably a length of clear water they've got. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting in view of how close the Romanians and the British were in the men's eight yesterday, that this four is now... So normal service has been resumed and it's just like the world championships where they absolutely dominated the event i kind of think with matt aldridge in the three seat you can see him there just behind freddie davison he's so solid he adds such a lot to this crew well that's a rowing video isn't it that's a technical coaching video that even in these fast conditions where it's a bit bumpy and they've even had a bit of a knock they're still able to just move so smoothly along and you can see it's again lovely picture that the netherlands there are going with them and it is the french who are are looking like they're in that bronze medal position. I wonder if the Romanians can dig deeper and come back again. Yeah, the Turland twins raced in Tokyo. There they are in the bows of the boat, finished ninth in the pair. The men from Aviron, Grenoblois, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Dutch on this side. Mollet, Ritzima, Molnar and Van Dorn in silver medal position. Romania haven't given up on the bronze medal. They are going again. No, After they're 47 strokes a minute, no. the Romanians. They're certainly going again. The other two That's at 42. Crazy. And the British in front are just sitting there at 37, 38. The field's coming back, but I'm sure they're going to get it as we're coming down to the line. Here we see it. Great Britain taking that gold medal in control. The Netherlands for the silver. And who's going to get this tough, tough oh. one to say? It was France, wasn't it? We saw the Netherlands just pushed out as those fast starting poles come through in fifth place and the Swiss are just crossing the line now. Well, I think that was on the level of the Polish men's quad that I saw yesterday as sort of the performance of the day. I think that one ranks right up there in the field of this quality. Absolutely. Like you said, that was, that was more like normal service from last year of the British Four, where, like we say, we saw the eight yesterday. We were in a real tight, tight race with the Romanians. And a good performance, you say, from the French getting on the podium here? Oh, it's massive for the French, you know, particularly after their men's double. I think, what did they finish eighth or ninth in, in the B final today? Yeah, the French men's double Olympic and world champions, quite disappointed. You think about what these four are feeling, that they got pushed out of a gold medal yesterday in the eight. Mm. Now they've just got pushed out of a, of a medal at all in the four. So tough for the Romanians doubling up here. Yeah, the British with that um, conservative start, I think we can say. Maybe veering a little off course, but, you know, from 350 through, they just move beautifully. And then you, you said that, was it the second 500 or the third 500? You said they'd had just had a beautiful 500. It just felt like, a, I mean, I said about 400 metres. It was about 400 metres in when you're at somewhere near a minute. The British four were absolutely dominant in this race. And Oliver Wilkes, 27-year-old from Oxford Brooks, done so well to get in this boat. Dave Ambler was the substitute, the former St. Paul schoolboy. Last year has won his, a place back. 
racing for Oxford. Matthew Aldridge, after that illness, that heartbreak from missing out last year, back in the crew. And Freddie Davison, the former St. Paul's schoolboy, just 24, and he's so good at the uh, rhythm setting. Yeah, great performance from that Great Britain for Christian Felker, their coach, as you say, will be delighted.